Welcome to the Emerging Temple broadcast. I am Michael Obeya. I will be your guide for the rest of this broadcast. At Emerging Temple, we seek to analyze current events within the context of God's plan for mankind, in which he intends, at the end of time, to raise up a people who will rule with him. Before I go any further, I want to encourage you to like our page, to subscribe to our channel, and if there is a notification bell icon, I would like you to hit that bell so you can be notified anytime we upload new videos. I want to encourage you to like this page so that we can develop the number of likes that we have so that we can come up in the rankings because we have a message that is critical for this hour and this time. So thank you so much for those of you who are already doing so. If you'd like to support our ministry, you can visit our website at templeoftruth.us. That's www.templeoftruth.us. Or you can go to patreon.com and look for our handle, Emerging Temple. Um, today, we're discussing a very short book, book, the Book of Ruth. But before we go into the Book of Ruth, I wanted to find out if anybody had any dreams or visions or anything that they would like to share with the group before we get started. I haven't been dreaming lately, so it's like I go to bed and, and go dead. <laughs> okay. How about you, Liz? Uh, just kind of the week, I, you know, I, being more active, being back to work, and, uh, you know, just remembering that Sometimes in your work, you have to be tough with people. And, you know, I'm working with some homeless women right now, and I just have to tell them, I'm sorry if you don't like the place, but, you know, women cannot be on the street. And nobody's handing you out a penthouse at the Hilton, so get over it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to stay at this place and go to the prayer meetings and go to all the other meetings and start figuring your life out. And if you do the program, you'll figure your life out. But if you want to sit here and whine, you're going to end up on the street and, you know, that's your choice. Do you want to stay and make your life better or you want to go back on the street until you figure it out? But women don't belong on the street. And it's really hard to say that to somebody when they're having a hard time. But, you know, they can't come to my house. Well, it is the truth. Well, it's and, kind you know, of... This... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, but, but I think, you know, this Bible study has helped me because, it's, you know, Jesus says, you know, if you want to walk on water, get out here and walk on the water. And when you start sinking, that's because you're of little faith. And, you know... um, who wants to be out there walking on the water? It's kind of scary. And, but, you know, I, I, you know, like my, I was talking to my son and he said, that's one of the first things they teach you in life saving is if a person wants help, you throw them the little lifesaver or you hold out a pole to them. But if the water's deeper than you are tall, you can't get in there because, and, and they're bigger than you, they'll just drown you. And it's very hard to, have to say to somebody who's really upset, you know, well, you know, now is the time to start dealing with your problems. And the only way you're going to deal with them is turn them over to God. But these ladies just love to hug those problems to themselves and put it in a sack on their back and carry it along. Because they're yes. sure their way, their way is the best way. I said, if your way is the best way, then how come you're in the situation you're in? You know, they're always telling I don't like this and I don't like that. I know I said, you know what, when you're starving enough, you'll eat those Brussels sprouts. Yeah. You know, they're always I don't like this and I don't like that and I'm this and I well, you know what? I bet there's a whole lot of starving people in the world that don't know if they're gluten or they're whatever or they're whatever. <laughs> and when you've got yourself to the place where you're living on the street and you're in an unsafe condition. You can't say I don't like what's for dinner. Well, then go get a job and buy food for this place so that the people have better food for you. Yes. But it's, it is hard, and I, and I, 
Well, I think also, uh, Liz, sometimes people that have been down several times uh, and do get a hand up, they get this attitude of entitlement. And that's yes, they why do. they complain so much. Yep. Well, if and Belly has joined us, she's muted out in oh, the background. Cool. So she must have background noise, but um, welcome, Abelli. Hi, Abelli. Hi, Abelli. We're just talking about. Um, no problem. Yeah. Uh, so I'll we're. Back on you if I'm on the road. Okay, no problem. Okay. <laughs> so um, I think that what you shared with us, Liz, is appropriate for the for the Book of Ruth, because in the Book of Ruth, um, Naomi lost had had been widowed and then both of her sons died and uh so there she was with her two daughter-in-laws and they were living in a foreign country in the land of moab with no visible means of support and in those days in that place if you didn't have if your husband was dead and you didn't have any grown sons to um to go and make money for you and run things for you that um, you were really kind of up a creek without the paddle, just like those yeah. four women that you were dealing with that found themselves suddenly homeless. Yeah. So, so um, I don't know, with that in mind, the, the book of Ruth is really about um, Christ and the church, which is what most of the yeah. Bible is, is about. And Boaz is the um, kinsman, redeemer and Ruth symbolizes the church so I don't know if anybody would like to share with us what they got out of reading the book of Ruth I know mom you thought we were reading judges but I know that you know the story of the book of Ruth very well well you still <laughs> So, um, Liz, any any thoughts? Anything you'd like to share? Um, I thought it was. I think you know, if you, and when you turn it to being the Ruth is the church, that um, when when Naomi gave her the chance of go to your family and they'll help you. And she said, no, this, you're my family, and stayed with her. I think that's something that, um, now that you're saying it says the church is something we have, we need to think about being loyal to people and, and not just saying, oh, well, it was great. Well, your husband and your sons were here, and we had everything, but now that we got nothing, I'm leaving. And, and, I, and I also think, that it also was that sometimes God opens that chance because maybe the other daughter-in-law wasn't tough enough to do it. So God gave her the chance to go back to her family and she took it. But, and, and I think that by, if we're saying that Ruth is the church, then we say by, by doing the right, you know, that compassionate and right thing, sometimes it might be harder than going home and having our family take care of us, but in the end, Ruth ended up uh, much better off because the man saw that the sacrifices and the hard work she gave because she was such a loyal person. And then he married her and she had a better life and could bring her mother-in-law to have a better life. Well, I, I think that's a good summation. Now, if we look at um, in Ruth chapter one, um, let's look at verses 12 through 18. Okay. Okay. Do you want to read that, Mom? Sure. Verse 12, Ruth one. Mm-hmm. Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. 
if I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth played unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, I lost you there for a moment. Are you there? Is anybody there? I'm there. Okay, I think we lost Let mom for a moment. Mom, can you start with verse 15, um, birth 16 again? Okay, I'm thinking she must have lost her internet. So I'm going to continue yeah. with verse 16. Okay. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if I ought but death part thee and me. If ought but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So what I wanted to point out here is that um, Orpha not only went back to her family, but she left worshiping God and she made a choice to go and worship other gods. And as the church, every believer is, an, is a part of the church. But God wants us to willingly follow him. He doesn't want us to follow out of, out of obligation. So he gives us each the opportunity. Hey, to Kate, make that. Sorry about that. No problem. That he um, gives Jim looks a little weak. They're both dressed. They're getting ready to go get something to eat. But they just wanted to touch base and let, let us know how they're doing. So okay. where did I leave off? 16? Yes. And um, I just finished reading 16. Okay, and I was to go to 18? Yes. Okay, where thou diest, I, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left, speaking unto her. Yes. And in verse 16, she said, um, Ruth told Naomi that thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. And what we were discussing was that each believer is a part of the, the church and a bride of Christ. And each of God wants each of us to come to him willingly and not out of obligation. So when Orpha decided to go back to her family she didn't just go back to her family she went back to serve her other to serve her other gods so she didn't make the choice to serve god she chose to go another way oh that's not good and each of us as a, as a member of the body of the christ each of us are the church and each of us has to make a choice. Are we gonna serve other gods and are, or are we going to serve God? And um, any time that it looks like we're not willing to serve him anymore, he gives us that choice. We don't have to. Yeah, we find out how, how lonely it is without him. You yes. Know? Yes. The way seemeth right, but it's utter destruction. Yes. So um, that's, what I, that's what I get from chapter one is that if we're looking at Ruth as symbolizing the church and Boaz is symbolizing God, 
uh, Jesus, the Redeemer, that in chapter one, Ruth had a choice. She didn't know where um, staying with Naomi was going to take her, but she said, she told Naomi, whoever your God is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve your God. That's who I'm going to serve. So right then she showed us that she believed in more than one God, that she could flip that easily. Orpha, Orpha flipped, yes. Ruth decided that she was going to stay with God, that, that, um, that she was going to serve the God of her husband. Now, here's another thing about chapter one that I noticed, that I went to the Bible dictionary and looked up Moab. Does anybody know who Moab was? I always it's thought Moab true. was a city. It was it was a city, but Moab was a person. Isn't that somewhere in the end of Judges? Yes. Um, I, I, I remember reading that too, but I'm not sure where. Well, do you remember the story of Lot and his two daughters? Oh, yeah. Okay, when, um, when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot and his wife and two daughters fled at the direction of the angels mm -hmm. and um, his wife looked back and she turned to a pillar of salt and then they went into the land um, away from Sodom and Gomorrah into a beautiful land but uh, the daughters looked to their father and said hey we don't have any husbands and we're all alone so with their dad so and two subsequent nights they got him drunk, and while he was um, in a drunken stupor, they slept with them, and both of them became pregnant. Oh, and Lord. Moab was the oldest grandson of Lot that came from the that um, illegitimate pairing, mm. that incestuous pairing. So um, now you come to Naomi and her sons, that they had moved to Moab because that was a fertile land. It was a wealthy place. Her sons were gonna you know, make their fortune there. And then they die in the land of Moab. And now she and her, she's there with her two daughter-in-laws. But those people in Moab, you can imagine, I, I don't know, the Bible doesn't say, but I'm imagining that um, if they're descended of Moab and Moab was result of incest, that they probably were not that faithful of people. They sound like they still were in transition to learning something. Yes. And, you know, those daughters came out of um, Sodom and Gomorrah, but they probably had a lot of worldly ways with them that they brought out of Sodom and Gomorrah. I think so, they probably were, 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 were not worthy of putting in the scripture because you don't want to give anybody any ideas. Yes. So there you have it, Ruth and Orpha. In fact, they didn't even bother to name the Lot's daughters. They just talked about his eldest daughter and his first daughter and his second daughter. That's it. So that's where Ruth and Naomi came out of Moab and returned to Bethlehem, Judah. Um, and so when they got back to Bethlehem, Judah, now they didn't have anything. So in chapter two, in chapter two, Naomi is sending Ruth out to try to gather the, um, the crops that are left in the field after everybody has gone along and picked the crops so that and they would have to find much gleaning. Right. But you notice, if you noticed in chapter two, that um, Boaz, uh, noticed Ruth gleaning and um, he told people to leave some extra stuff. Like, let's look at Ruth chapter two. Um, okay, Ruth chapter two verses 15 through 18. Liz, can you read that for us? Yes. 
She rose to glean, and Boaz instructed his servants to let her glean among the sheaves themselves without scolding her, and then let to let drop some handfuls and leave them for her to glean without being rebuked. She gleaned in the field until evening, and when she had beat out what she had gleaned, it, it came to about one yuka of barley, which, is, which she took to the city and showed to her mother-in-law. Next she sought, brought out, and gave her what she had left over from lunch. And so her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you glean today? Where did you work? May he who took notice of you be blessed. And then she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked. The man at the place where I work today was named Boaz, she said. Mm. Now keep going. Oh, may he be blessed by the Lord, who is ever merciful to the living and to the dead. Naomi explained to her daughter-in-law and exclaimed to her daughter-in-law. And she continued, he is a relative of ours, one of our next of kin. He even told me, added Ruth, the Moabite, that I might stay with his servants until they complete the entire harvest. You would do well, my dear Naomi, I rejoined, to go out with his servants, for if someone else's field might, he might be insulted. And so she stayed gleaning with the servants of Boaz until the end of the barley and wheat harvest. Wow. So, so what happened there in um, verse 16, in the King James first version, it's uh, Boaz is speaking and he said, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and not re and rebuke her not. So he told them to leave some good, you know, leave some of the good crop there for her on purpose. Mm -hmm. He knew she needed to eat. Yes, so he was making sure that she and her mother had plenty to eat. So isn't that kind of what God does for us when we, when we have left the world, um, you know, Babylon, and uh, we don't know where we're going. He kind of makes sure that all of our needs are taken care of. Have, have Amen. You, he, <laughs> yeah. he, he comes through. And so it's so it like it to me in in um, chapter two, it's like Ruth is going through a test to see what she's going to do. Is she worthy of him saving her? He knows who she is, right? Right. But does she know who she is? <laughs> I don't think she did. No. So then. Um, in chapter three, the mother-in-law decides to get bold, Naomi, and um, she recommends to Naomi that Naomi um, seek Boaz's protection. Because in those days that um, when, when you were widowed at a young age with no male heir, that mm -hmm. a family member was supposed to take you as their wife. And your firstborn child would be uh, the offspring of your, of your late husband. And all of the lands and property that your husband owned becomes the property of your, fam of your relative. So you would need a relative that had uh, money to mm -hmm. be able to take care of you. So in chapter three, we see that... Um, Naomi sends um, Ruth to ask for Boaz's protection. And um, let's see, let me see, let me find the verse where she, she asks him to um, stretch forth his skirt over her. So she was asking him for a covering, to be her covering. Hmm. Okay, I see it. Chapter three, verse nine. Okay, if we've started at um, verse six and go verse six through verse 11. Do you want to read that, Mom? Sure. 
And she went down onto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was weary, he went to lie down weary. at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid, and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself and behold, a woman lay at his, at his feet. And he said, who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. And he said, blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. Uh, how much further? 13? Oh, keep reading. Yeah. And, and now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto thee the part of the kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of the kinsman to thee, then I will do the part of the kinsman to thee, as the Lord liveth, lie down until the morning. And continue to verse 14. And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And he said, let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. Okay, so we see here that unlike Lot's daughters who took advantage of him while he was drunk, that Ruth didn't take advantage of Boaz. Yeah, she got some honor for that. Yes. So um, that's why I said to me that um, she was being tested in chapter two and chapter three. And now he's decided, okay, she's worthy of him to um, redeem her. Um, Liz, do you have anything to, that, any thoughts on this? Um, well, I think it actually is in the next chapter, but I think Ruth proves herself. I mean, then, you know, because he says to her um, later on when he says to her, you didn't go chasing the young men, rich or poor. You you did the honorable thing and took care of, took care of Naomi in, in like an honest way. Cause, and so then it, I think that shows that Ruth was, um, you know, she wasn't playing games. Like you said, she wasn't playing game like the two daughters of Lot. She was just open and honest about things. And I think if we're saying that Ruth is the church, I think that's a very clear message to the church that we need to be open and honest. Mm. We can't try and trick people into... I mean, if it's the church, we can't try and trick people into following God or believing in God. We have to be open and honest about what is there. Yeah, and what people what people risk and what people give up, you know? Right. And I think I think um like mom pointed out, um the person like the daughters of Lot, they if they come from a background that says let's it's okay to do it the wrong way and they do it the wrong way, then the family that grows from them follows a pathway that's not correct and and righteous and and so Boaz could see in Ruth that she she did do the right thing, not just what was most expedient for herself. And, yes. And then it must tell us that as we go along, the fruit of that church is going to be a better type of person and have a closer relationship to God because 
they're worried about and they're thinking about what God wants, not just what they need. Yeah, and I think when we speak of the church, we got to remember that the church is you and I. That right. um, it's it's not really the church as a corporal collective body, but it's more thinking of the church as you, as mom, as me. Because when we go out into the world, we're the only church that the world sees. They may never set um, set feet inside the four walls of a sanctuary. Right. But we are the living temple of God. We're the only model that they'll probably get a chance to see. Yes. And I, I think, you know, we, we need to, um, I think each one of us needs to realize that um, that's, a, you know, it's a, it's a big duty and, and we don't realize that just little things mean mean something because um you know uh, if we like if if we just say we litter no matter where we go we just throw the stuff out the car who cares and you know we get home from work and stop at the curb and throw all our stuff in the gutter because we don't want to have to take it in leave it in our car or take it in our garage and you know, so we we take the easy way out, let somebody else take care of it. We create um, an example for other people in the neighborhood to do that and and for our children to do that. And then, you know, when people say, oh, well, pollution is bad. Well, are you willing to stop? Are you willing to stop using certain things to make the pollution less? And all the things, and if, if you found out that the food you're eating is coming from where they're cutting down the rainforest and using child labor. Would you give up your Christmas meal and say, well, I guess I'm going to have a different Christmas meal because I have to give up all these foods because they come from the company that's doing that. Um, And how many of us will do those things or take that extra step to do something? And I think that's what Ruth shows us when she, as figuratively she's the church she goes out and picks up those little grains until she has enough food for herself and her mother-in-law and you know I think the church meaning each one of us in herself how much are you willing to do are you going to go pick up those little grains and do something with them to serve God or are you just going to say no I don't need to do that (laughs) and um, I think that in chapter four kind of continues in that same vein but now we're looking at the the other kinsman the closest kinsman that was closer than than Boaz Um, right uh, that uh once Boaz explained to that other kinsman that first he explained to the other kinsman, hey, do you want to inherit all the property that was uh, Naomi's husband and of her two sons? And the guy says, yeah, 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 I'd like that, that I'll buy it. And he says, oh, well, one more thing. If you buy it, you also get, um, you also get Ruth, the dead guy's wife. And he says, no, 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 no. I, I, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> I, that, that's going to mess me up. <laughs> Shall we read that part? <laughs> so people at home can, can see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I don't know whose turn it is. Mom or Liz, do you want to read that? From chapter, from chapter four, verse one through... Um, Uh, verse nine. Okay, I'll do it. Okay. Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there, and behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, 
sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth, the Moabites, uh, to the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was, in, was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing for to confirm all things. A man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor, and this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and Malon's of the hand of Naomi. Is that where you told me to stop? Continue with verse 10. I probably told you to stop there, but you got to keep going. Okay. Moreover, Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of Maon, Malon, had the per have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses this day. That took okay. me down to verse 11. You want me to keep yeah. going? Um, well, let's talk about this, what we've read so far here. So okay. uh, the thing is that there are, you know, the, the Bible says there are many gods. There are lords many. Um, there are lords many and gods few. That um, So she had a choice of another lord. That was the nearest kinsman. But that kinsman wasn't willing to sacrifice for her. He that knew he, the whole story. He knew the whole story. It was like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. I want the land, but I, I don't want the responsibility of the wife, too. That's just too much. Not <laughs> that just, wife. Not what? Not that wife. Uh uh. I'm not taking her. I don't care how virtuous she says she says she is, but that's just too much. That that's just too much trouble for me. I'm amazed that he felt he had the right to choose because it well, looked like he was almost being forced to do it. Well, he was honor bound to take her, but since um, Boaz had said, look, if you don't want to take on the responsibility, I'll take on the responsibility because it wasn't just about buying the land. You think about it, that if he, he had to buy three properties, three mm -hmm. estates, and that means paying, I don't know what they had to pay taxes then, probably paying taxes, maintenance, um, caring for all the people that live on the property. That, that's a big, huge responsibility, which he was willing to take that. But when you throw in there, I got to take the wife to be my wife too. No way. He wasn't doing that. Think he had his heart set on somebody else or he just didn't want that history? He didn't want that. I think he probably didn't want that history. He probably also had another wife who um, probably would have given him grief if he had taken an, another, a foreign wife. Now, you know how we are. It'd be, it'd be grief for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in those days, men had multiple wives, but, right. to, bring, to, but to bring a foreign wife that comes from that lineage yeah that's a bit much 
that I, I don't know. I think his wife would have given him hell or his wives, however many wives he had. They, they would not have been for that at all. <laughs> well, when I read it, I, I, I was foreshadowing her in the midst of several wives. And That's her what I'm not saying. being able to fit in. She probably couldn't. She probably could not. So now if we read, what about you, Liz? What do you think? Um, I think if we if we take it back to the idea that Ruth is the church mm -hmm. um, and that Boaz is the redeemer, well, even though there may be another person who um, has has the responsibility to redeem um they 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 don't want that they don't want that responsibility and so they set it down and if, and ha and if we think about that as being um a different um if we talk about ourselves inside ourselves so that if um, the redeemer comes to us and says, "This is this is what needs to be done," and we say, "No, I don't think so. It's too much trouble for me." We have the freedom to do that, and and yet the redeem the redeemer will, you know, if we have our faith and keep our faith, the redeemer is there and we will choose the right the right place, or the right place will choose us. But I think if we're going to say that Boaz was the redeemer, I think it kind of opens the door to that that choice is out there. Like like the other daughter-in-law said, she was going back to her people and their gods. Naomi stayed, I mean, Ruth stayed with Naomi and her gods. And so we each have that choice ourselves to... Yes. Now, I think, it, I think when we take it at, as each of a person, um, even the guy brought with you know the guy he had the right to do it, but um, he didn't want the responsibility of doing it. But yes. Even that, is, even that is a lesson in talking about when choice comes upon you, do you take that choice to do the the compassionate and right thing or do you say oh no it's too hard for me i don't want to do it yeah it's inconvenient <laughs> yeah i think that in chapter four there's one more thing at the end of the chapter that's important yes and okay if you look at um verses 14 through 22 can you read that liz yeah um and then the women said to Naomi, blessed is the Lord who has not failed to provide you today with an heir. May he become famous in Israel. He will become your comfort and the support of your old age. For his mother is the daughter-in-law who loves you. She is worth more to you than seven sons. And Naomi took the child, placed him on her lap and became his nurse. And the neighbor women gave him his name at the, good, at the news that a grandson had been born to Naomi. They called him Obed, and he was the father of Jesse, the father of David. These are the descendants of Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron, and Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Amina, Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nashim. Nashim was the father of Salmon, and Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed, and Obed was the father of Jess. And Jess became the father of David. So I think they tell us that if Boaz if Boaz had not taken done what he did and Ruth had not come, then then that that line down to Jess and to and to David would not have led to Jesus because he wouldn't have been there. All those people wouldn't have been there. But yes. I think it's important. Yeah. And I think that 
um, what it shows is that Ruth, who was a foreigner and an outsider, she became, you know, because of her, that um, we had Jesse, then David, then, um, you know, later on, Jesus. So right. it, so this kind of foreshadows that Jesus didn't just come for the, um, for Israel, but also for the Gentiles, because right. her being from the land of Moab, she was an outsider. And now she was grafted into the, um, the family tree of Jesus. It was interesting yep. how that got woven in there because it looked like it wasn't going to happen there for a while, didn't it? Yes. That's a yeah. good story. All right, that's to revisit. So nothing yep. happens by chance. It was all in God's hands. Yeah, and I think it's just interesting how throughout the Old Testament, that it doesn't seem like it. The Old Testament is about the New Testament. And the Old Testament and the New Testament is about our relationship between us and God. It all comes down to God and us. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I guess, uh, like you said, it didn't look there for a while. It didn't look like this was going to happen. And, uh, but... You know, that's what we're told even in Revelation, that in the end, we win. Amen. So it doesn't matter what it looks like right now, that um, whatever's going on, whatever we see, that's just, uh, that's just a momentary flash. But we have choices to make along the way. We can be like Ophar and decide to turn back and worship another god we can listen to the you know listen to the whatever the the world is telling us um follow the systems of the world or we can follow the program of god and that program of god you know we don't really know exactly where it's going to take us next that we go on all kinds of twists and turns but we know that he's going to make sure that it's right in the end amen I mean, who, Amen. Would think, who would think that being widowed, her husband dies, and he wasn't some slouch of a guy, but she ends up the wife of some wealthy older man. I don't think she saw that coming. I doubt it. She, so. it if she did, it was, it was right just about the time it was coming. Yes. That seems so fast, but we don't know just how fast that was. That could have been a couple of days, could have been a couple of weeks. Well, it said that we know that it was more than a couple of weeks because she started at barley harvest and she stayed through the harvest of his other fields. Now, I don't know in harvest, you know, how long it is from barley harvest to wheat harvest. And however, however many harvests there are in between, but um, isn't wheat one of the last things that's harvest before the, the end of the growing season? I think so. Yeah, because I know up here on the mountain that they harvested the last of the wheat not too long ago, and now they've got it wrapped in plastic for winter. Now they didn't have plastic to wrap their wheat in for winter. They but, just uh, wrapped it in, in, in stalks and left them stand and the outside stalks protected what was inside yeah because in um, chapter 2 verse 23 it says amen 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 so so she kept fast by the maidens of boaz to glean until the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law so she was there for a while and those harvests can be three months long or more. Yes. And um, I don't know anything about harvesting barley. I don't even know. I, I wouldn't even recognize a field of barley if I saw it. I know what barley looks like when it's in the supermarket. 
<laughs> yeah, me too. Most of those grains, most of those grains look alike uh, when when they're growing. They they'll get to be 12, 14 inches tall, and the grain is at the top of the stalk. Yeah. So I I don't know. I mean, I know that like up here, strawberries come first. That's the first harvest, and then you know it's several months later before the wheat is brought in but I don't know about barley how long it is so we know it was at least a few months well not everybody grows barley so you don't get to see it much as much of it I only know what they use it for now if they just sell it for us to eat or if they feed it to animals I don't know your dad would know he's a yeah, I guess, yeah we'd have to ask him I know they used barley in soup <laughs> Yes, I, I buy it for soup. <laughs> yeah. So that's about it. Well, does anybody have anything else they want to share? This was good. I enjoyed it. I'm sure Brother Mike would have taken us some other places, but um, he'll, he can always write us in the chat room. Do you think do you think he's listening today? Um no, he's I can see that he's not listening, but I'll post the broadcast like I always do. So okay. make make sure to check the group chat to see if there's anything else he wanted to add that we didn't see. Okay. So Okay, does somebody um Liz, can you close us in prayer? Amen. So I solicit your prayers. I solicit your support. Okay, I want to thank you for your time. For those of you who have been faithful, you know, uh, supporting this work, for being involved, sharing these videos. Okay, don't be, don't, don't, don't get weary. Don't be weary. Don't get tired. Your strength is supposed to come brighter and brighter every day. Okay, keep pressing on. Share these videos with your family and friends. Start watch parties on Facebook. Go over these videos so your friends and family can discuss it. Okay, and continue to write us. Write me through Facebook. Write me through you know, the, the comment section here on YouTube. Okay, so I want to encourage you. Thank you so much for the way you've been supporting us. Thank you so much for all that you've been doing. We really appreciate it. Remember what I said. If you want to continue listening to us, you can audio. You can always go. Okay, to our website. You can see the online menu channels. That you can get us through, like I mentioned, um, Apple's iTunes. I met Apple iTunes. I mentioned um, Spotify and I think Google. You can also, you know, there are other platforms also through which you can hear us through audio. Okay, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and to, you know, hit the like buttons, hit the like buttons. I can't say that enough. Every time you want these videos through YouTube, hit the like buttons. Now, if you're watching through Facebook, or you're watching through some other video like WhatsApp, it's not going to show here, so more you can see a like. But if you're watching through YouTube, I want to encourage you, or Facebook, wherever it is, I want to encourage you, hit that like button, okay? Hit that like button, it matters to us, okay? Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for everything that you've been doing, you know, by watching our videos. 